In today's video, we're gonna learn how to write more intelligent, intuitive for loops in Swift. Before we get into things, drop a like down below, say hello in the comments with the YouTube algorithm, let's open up Xcode and let's dive right in. So we're gonna work in a Xcode playground. So let me just create that over here, let me just center the window. Let's creatively call this uh, better for loops. And I will save it, I guess, to my desktop, wherever it was. Yep, desktop, let me full screen this window, and let's talk about some better for loops. So for loops are pretty uh, ubiquitous throughout most programming languages. They're often used in Swift as well. Let me start by creating a array. So I will say numbers will be a array, and this array will have a range. range I'll use a range operator, so I'll say from maybe zero um, through 1,000 inclusive. And generally a for loop is written as follows. So we'll say for num in numbers, and we can go out and print. So let's just say print set a number. If I give my super complicated program here a run in this playground, we'll see all of our numbers enumerated and printed in the console. Super shocking. So let's make this a little better. So a lot of times we have cases where we do something in a for loop based on some criteria. So perhaps what I'll do is I'll say if the number is greater than 900, uh, or maybe let's do something something different. So we'll say if the number is less than or equal to 101, in that case, we'll print it. So once more, we'll open up our console here. Let me clean this and I will pause and hit play again. And you'll notice that now it'll print from zero up until 101 inclusive because that's our condition. So on and so forth, right? So you can have a bunch of conditions in here and it gets kind of messy to read and it also gets a little annoying to write out. Uh, not to mention, it's not really the most performant way to go about doing this. So how do we make it better? Well, it turns out for loops have a way where you can specify condition in line. So I can say for num in numbers where this condition is applicable in that case, go ahead and print out our number. So we're doing the same thing as the if prior, but the difference now is we have it in line with our for loop. The other thing I'll mention is you can have compound operations in here, right? So you can say if the number is less than or equal to 101, you can also have other operations. Maybe the number is uh, you know, non-negative, you can say greater than zero, you can take the absolute value of the number, so on and so forth. I use numbers here as a uh, simple example, but this does indeed work in a variety of cases, right? So let's do one more example for a for loop with a where clause. So let's create a struct called, let's call it student. And you can see that I do all these videos on the fly by my uh, making stuff up along the way. So I'll say name here, have a name and we'll say is good student which will be a bool and let's create a array of students so I will go ahead and say that this is students student and let's I'll be a student today I guess I'm a good student sometimes I'll copy and paste this a few times uh, we'll say Tim Cook is a student not not time cook uh, we'll say Bill Gates is a student Everyone knows he's an awful student, so we're gonna change this to be false. Tim's a good guy, so he'll be true. Now what I wanna do down here is we are going to iterate for student in students, and what I care to do here is say, give me a student that is a good student. So I'll say, is good student. Is good student is what I'm looking for, and this should be uh, singular. Is good student, and it looks like it's not cooperating. So let's see why that is. It's because I have a typo in here. And we'll print out student.name. So we're saying, give me all the good students and print out their names. So let's clear our console. We'll pause this down here. We'll give it a run once more. And cool, I'm a good student. And so is Tim Cook. Too bad, Bill Gates. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Pretty simple video. A lot of people actually aren't aware that where clauses exist. Uh, for for loops as well. You can actually use them in a ridiculous number of places across the language. That is all I've got for you guys today. Pretty short and brief video. I want to stay true to my promise of one video every single day for the entirety of this year. So we're through January. As of tomorrow, we're going to continue the Rick and Morty uh, building the full app series if you've been following along. So not to worry about that. 
Uh, before clicking away, drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel, tweet the video, connect on LinkedIn, all the socials. Let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular you want to see. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.